Let me start with a simple question. Is your home already online? I'm not talking about your broadband, but your devices. Your doorbell camera, your baby monitor, the printer you haven't touched for two years. Well, most people assume all of these stay safely inside the home, but in reality, thousands of households across the world have devices exposed to the public internet without ever realising it. And today I'm going to show you the tool that reveals it safely so you can check your own home. It's called Showdown and it's one of the most powerful privacy tools in existence. So what is Showdown? After that opening question, Showdown suddenly makes a lot more sense. Showdown is basically a search engine, but instead of finding websites, it finds devices. If a device in your home is exposed to the internet, even by accident, Shodan can see it. Not because it's hacking anything, because the device is essentially broadcasting itself online. Today I'm going to walk you through how Shodan works briefly and give you a very safe live demo and show you what it means for your privacy. So, <clears throat> what does Shodan actually do? Well, it constantly scans the entire public internet to see basically to just see what's online. It doesn't hack anything, it just checks what's exposed and shows people. If a device is listening openly on the internet with no protection, Shodan will catalogue it. That is why security teams love it, and why criminals arguably love it even more. It's also why privacy advocates lose sleep, because um, when you start running a few queries through Shodan, you see the extent of the problem. So I'm going to show you how it works in a minute, but let's just briefly say why it matters. Uh, in the UK particularly, we've spent the past year obsessing over age verification problems of the Online Safety Act. Uh, but meanwhile, our smart doorbells, fridges and security cameras are quietly sitting online with default settings. Now we've got an Amazon doorbell that actually does biometrics on your visitors. So i um, not sure how that is going to turn out. But Shodan actually reveals how many of these UK households are unintentionally broadcasting their devices to the public internet. It's a combination of weak manufacturing settings, ISP defaults. It's a sort of perfect storm. So I'm going to do a responsible demo. Shodan is quite a dangerous tool to use and it can be abused very, very easily. I'm not going to show you that. Obviously, this is not about snooping this is about understanding how the devices become exposed and which devices are we're going to use some very safe queries that show the scale of the problem without ever touching private camera feeds or inappropriate content or anything like that which would probably get my channel banned anyway so we're going to stick to metadata headers certificates ports technical fingerprint devices just to show you what's online Okay, the first one we're going to use, uh, I'm going to show you a query here. I'm just going to put it into Shodan, but of course, let, first let's start Shodan. And it's simply a, um, a search engine, and you just go to Shodan.io. Now, you'll need an account to use any of these filters, uh, uh, these queries. So you just have to create a free account. There are professional accounts and expensive accounts. You don't have any of those. You, the free account is fine. It, it does limit, but this is good enough, definitely, for the majority of people. So let's put that query in, and let's just show you what this is. This is actually searching for HP printers in the UK using port 9100. It's a standard printing port, and it'll be thousands of different British house Holds. And here we can see, we can see now these are all visible on the internet. I've got the IP address here. I've got the status pi from the, each printer. So we've got laser jets, lots of laser jets there. All the front page are laser jet 4200s, oddly enough. And there's probably loads of those, which is why they'll sort of be dominated. Now, Showdown, you can go for the first two pages. There'll be hundreds of pages here, probably. And if you want the other pages, you have to upgrade to a paid uh, account but basically what's happening here we're getting a list of internet accessible printers they're basically printers that were set up once and forgotten their device is exposed often because UPnP opened a port automatically on them printers were broadcasting their model and firmware versions to the entire internet so hackers can look at this sort of information and work out attacks 
There's no passwords, no restrictions on any of these. We're not seeing any documents or anything. This is just the IP address and the status of the, the printer. So you can go further, obviously, but I'm, I'm just doing a very basic demonstration here of how normal household gadgets quietly leak information online. Okay, and let's go and see the next demo. Uh, we're going to show you smart plugs here. Now, we probably all, lots of us have got these, and the TP-Link HS100 is one of the most common ones. And so we're going to do a little searching showdown on that. I'm sticking to UK at the moment, just get, to give me something to focus on. Uh, but you can change the country in any of these quite easily, or it, you can remove the country parameter. These are just filters. Uh, and there's an example on the showdown page of different filters you can use. So here I'm going to search for country HGB and HS100, which is a... Uh, TP-Link smart device so and here we can look here and here we can see an IP address United Kingdom Hearn Bay we've got a friendly name fancy lamp so there's a lamp connected to this one fancy lamp tiki lounge whatever that is nursery so there's there's liable to be some sort of baby cam or something connected to that I don't know lots of la lamp smart plug which from lounge cupboard excuse me <laughs> So this query really reveals how many of these plugs accidentally expose themselves online. Um, why? Again, probably UPnP uh, auto opens these ports on these devices, or they've got old firmware that is more insecure. Their remote access has been left enabled by default or by accident, or people have plugged them in and they forgot they even existed, really. There might be anything connected to those. I don't know. Uh, remember, we're only viewing harmless metadata there. There's nothing private on any of these pages we're showing here, but it demonstrates how invisible the problem is to the average household. So those are all sitting in households across the UK, and I can see their status. Okay, let's show one more demo. And this is just to show you uh, the mini web servers you can get on certain devices, lots of devices, really. A lot of people have no idea their smart devices run little um, web servers, not like full websites, just to run the configuration panel and stuff like that. So we're going to search here for country GB web server and light PD, which is uh, the service name. Okay, and we can search here and we're finding lots of these all over. There's in London, all these are in London. They're different web servers running on different devices all across the UK, Swinton. It's just the first page, so most of those are in London. So LightPD is a lightweight server used in things like home routers. So these will be home routers, smart home hubs, uh, CCTV, DVR boxes, stuff like that, energy monitors, any sort of budget IoT gadgets from China might have these little built-in web servers, just so you can configure them or um, change settings. Uh, so this query shows you how many of these expose the, uh, their banners. So on a, just a quick search here, we found 2080 in London, 136 in Swinton for some reason. If you sort of investigated those, you could look at different organizations and find out what's going See some products, Netgear there, so there's some routers there as well. Um, you can drill down a lot onto this, but I'm just trying to show you a safe demo. Okay, so that's Shodan. So uh, it's really important to point out, Shodan can be difficult. It's not difficult to use, but it can be a bit dangerous to use. Shodan is completely legal, but what you click on determines whether you stay safe. Now, metadata is fine, which I've been showing you. Looking at a logon page is fine. But you should stay away from looking at things like snapshot live feeds cameras. But just because they're open to the internet, they're probably not intended to be open to the internet. So stay away from live feeds cameras, RTSP the streaming ports, offering video streams, because Showdown will show those. And I'm, for this demo, I'm just staying clear of that, because there are hundreds of thousands of CCTV cameras that are accidentally enabled on that, and Showdown will show you them. Okay, so what you'll notice if you play around with Showdown, it's a real eye-opener, really. You'll see how many devices with firmware from years and years ago, probably sitting in the corners of rooms and offices all over the world, really. You'll see routers which are still using default passwords that you can just log into. And you'll see products that were clearly never designed with real-world users in mind. 
Um, the scale of exposure is hard to comprehend until you've seen it for yourself. <clears throat> so what you can't do, I say, on Shodan, but remember, Shodan is an informational tool. It just gives you information. It doesn't hack anything. It doesn't reveal password. If something is exposed, it's because the device has been left open, not because Shodan broke into it or anything like that. And interacting with private systems is absolutely off limits. This video is about awareness, net, not exploitation. So why does it matter for privacy? Well, Shodan proves that privacy isn't all about Meta, Google, or the Online Safety Act. It's, uh, it's a huge risk coming from the gadgets sitting in our kitchens and living rooms. Many of these, there's been some pretty extensive hacks over the years. There's one called Shadow, Shadow V2, which happened in sort of September, October, November this year that compromised loads of devices. I think there were um, a variety of routers and NAS devices and things like that. So there's a lot of risk coming from gadgets sitting in our kitchens and living rooms. And really half of them connect to the internet by default. Many of them stay exposed until you manually lock them down. Showdown is simply the messenger here that shows you what is happening online. So how to protect yourself. I'm not going to go into this detail, but it's a, a, a subject for research, really. If a dev device demands open ports to work, I'd think twice about uh, wanting it on your computer network. Remember, these things are a gateway onto your network, really. If you can, turn off UPnP, um, Universal Plug and Play. It's one of the biggest culprits here. Put all smart gadgets on a guest network is a good tactic. Uh, then they're separated from all your personal devices, like your phones, um, your computers and tablets. And really important, keep firmware updated. Lots of this stuff is very easy to access purely because the firmware hasn't been updated. Uh, but remember, sometimes manufacturers don't bother releasing updates or anything like that. Shodan isn't the problem here, our devices here. Shodan gets a bad rep, gets blamed for exposing devices, but it's holding up a mirror. It shows the internet as it really is. Messy, insecure, and completely unprepared for the Internet of Things era. So if anything, it forces us to confront the reality manufacturers would probably prefer we would ignore. So if you want a deeper dive into Shodan queries, UKI exposure, or how smart home devices really link information online, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to go into more detail, depending on how this video goes down. Okay, thanks for watching, and have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.